Hello, welcome to the Health In Show, an affiliate program of Homeopathy World Community. You've come to the right place to tune in and participate with your comments and questions. Love is the greatest healer of all, but sometimes, in order to change our emotions, we must take action in other spheres of our lives. We speak with experts in alternative and complementary health fields and hope you will benefit in some small or great way. Remember, you are wherever your thoughts are. Make sure your thoughts are where you want to be. Good day, everyone. This is the Health In Show. You've come to the right place to learn and reap the benefits of energy medicine, homeopathy that does work and does heal. We're going to have a connection to Brazil and potentially India and learn about some studies that have been going on to heal children and teens that have convulsions, seizures, and epilepsy. And this is um, a really important issue of our times considering the many causes of these kinds of illnesses. Uh, So many student athletes have concussions as well as professional athletes. That's a contributing cause. Chemicals, neurotoxins, and these kinds of um, environmental impacts. Um, I'm going to introduce you and then I'm going to talk a little bit about a brand new Lancet publication. So, we have with us Professor, Professor Regina Rianelli from Brazil, speaking to us not in her native Portuguese, except maybe a few words. <laughs> and uh, she is a social media expert, an internet marketer, a data scientist. She graduated social communication, journalism, advertising, and all of these high university uh, degrees. Of course, what is most important, she is a homeopath that cares for hundreds and hundreds of children who have issues with their brain function. She, in uh, 2012, had an education in medicinal plants and phytotherapy and the Federal University of Vicosa Plant Science Department. And in 2007 to 2010, studied homeopathy at the Roberto Coast Institute. I hope I did not miss anything. Uh, There is on Homeopathy World Community links to her blogs, and you can see photographs of her work and her studies. So um, I'm pleasantly here to introduce you, uh, Regina, to the listeners, and let me know if I missed anything about your background. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your attention. Yes, I'm from Rio de Janeiro. I have studied homeopathy from the year 2007 up to 2010. And uh, we, took it, we took another course for eight months from Vissosa in Minas State University. And uh, our master course in year 2007 2004 and 5 was focused in new technology with medications. Now we are still keeping on on our PhD studies, still studying medications, but we practice social homeopathy. So we have around 1,000 and more clients, and mostly they are below um, miserably. Uh, they're they are very very extremely poor. So besides, we see them with homeopathy. We give away the medication because we also have little children and we have adults that live on the streets, and we have a clinic that they come, and it's all for free, and we do this as pro bono activity. And most of our cases have um, heavy users with drugs, habits, and several ones. And we have very reached to a very successful uh, mix of matrix of homeopathy 
and we give them all in one drop box, uh, one drop bottles. I'm sorry, and uh, and it their response is quick, and they seize within um, about two months. They they often come back and say they have no more either epilepsy or seizures and some convulsions. And we intend to share with you all this mix of homeopathy because our Dr. Leda Ohana, she had a 52-year clinic, homeopathy clinic experience, and she was the one that helped with us uh, within eight years of our practice along with her at uh, Euripides, we had about uh, 25 clients that are even crack users or cocaine users, which is more often found uh, on the streets. And these ones were all clean after a period of time. So I humbly say Whatever we are sharing with you today comes with a long experience of um, with credit homeopaths and uh, and the formulas we are sharing you can you can apply with your clients and you'll get just the same results and we are very happy to be here you and being able back. through Debbie and Amnon that we can exchange our expertise with you all. Thank you very much. Well, wonderful. We're looking so forward to really getting started and breezing through this very full PowerPoint. I wanted to wave and say, I see your doggy in the background. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's very cute. And also, um, I know that Dr. Nikhil is trying to log in either. I told him he will have to come on the voice, Computers 2K Voice, if, you, if anybody wants to call in and speak with you. Um, also in the U.S., you can call 919-518-9773. So there's two ways. And you can get onto the chat where there's activity. A lot of people are chatting it up over there. And you can um, ask your questions or put your comments, and we will talk about it. So I wanted to interject at the very beginning some news that I just read on the Lancet. There is, and I can put on Homeopathy World Community, and I already put on Facebook, the download to this article in the journal um, from The Lancet, it is about neurobehavioral effects of developmental toxicity. And this is saying that chemicals in our environment have brain effects. They can disrupt brain function. Basically, neurodevelopment disabilities, including autism, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, dyslexia, cognitive impairments that in affect millions and millions of children worldwide. And some diagnoses seem to be increasing in frequency. So these in not only, I mean, you specifically mentioned hardcore people who are taking drugs to self-medicate from their emotional disorders or whatever pain that they might have. But industrial chemicals injured the developing brain and among the known causes for the rise of these illnesses. Um, so this Lancet review was done in 2006, a uh, total sy systemic review, and they identified five industrial chemicals. Um, of those lead, methylmercury, polychlorinated biphenols, arsenic, and toluene. Now, those are widespread in our environment. And right now we have coal ash, which has arsenic and many of these other things that spilled all over our waterways. And this is going on all around the world, these leaks and spills. Now, what I want to point out is six additional developmental neurotoxins are manganese, and I'm highlighting the next one, fluoride, because we're brushing our teeth with it every day. It's in our water every day, what we cook, bathe, and drink. Fluoride is defined as a neurotoxin. So you have to 
learn this information, become self-educated, and take action. And then there are another five more or four more chemicals that I can't barely even pronounce. So the most important one was the fluoride that I wanted to tell you about. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with the program today. Okay. Um, The PowerPoint is available for you as a PDF file from Homeopathy World Community. And I can also put the link on the chat. So why don't we just get started? I know you wanted to do this as a memoriam for Dr. Lita Ohana. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. She she means the word. Voice. Voice. Okay, and we're going to welcome Dr. Nikhil on the voice call-in. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello, you're with Uh, us. You're with us live. Yay. Namaskaram, Nikhil. Hello. Hello, uh, namaskar to all of you. And, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Hello? Yes. Yes. We're getting Fine. started. We're getting started. And um, uh, doctor, you're gonna have to uh, turn down the volume on the website because you are hearing us on delay. There. Just leave your Skype open, but turn down the volume on the bottom. Of the uh, video, there's a volume. Turn that I, off on the website. I put it on my laptop. On my right. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. And the mute. Okay. Let me just listen and focus whatever in our headset. Uh, just one thing. Uh, Debbie, you just mentioned fluoride, and uh, we we use here at home. Uh, there is at Vermont, uh, in New, at the north of the United States, they have an aloe vera toothpaste. Aloe and vera, yes, mm-hmm. and it's very very effective, and uh, there is no fluoride. Right, and I have many other kinds of places where you can get non-fluoride toothpaste. If you have an inquiry, go ahead and send me an email at homeopathyworldcommunity at gmail.com. So we're welcoming Dr. Nikhil Kambli from India. He is with us on The Voice. And Regina Rianelli, go ahead and um, get started with um, slide number two, the abstract. Okay. Um, well, uh, it's focused by um, the work of Samuel Hahnemans and Roberto Costa, who does the nozodes, and Patak, the Indian, uh, who worked as uh, f- inspirational f- found fountain to all of us research- researchers, and uh, our abstract focus exact. Exactly in with the similia simili muscurentur because it's uh, it's been successful since the eighteen hundreds and we don't want to change that. We just might uh, with our practical and daily routine add here one or their matrix instead of the uh, academic one matrix per client. Some of them that, for instance, are uh, alcohol abusers and drug users, heavy user, heavy duty drugs. We put a mix about eleven or twelve matrix in one drop box, one drop bottle. I'm sorry, and they uh, and they they diminish their eagerness to either drink alcohol and use heavy-duty drugs, and the episodes of their convulsions, they, they seize. In about two mm-hmm. months, they say they have one seizures, and in six months, they are clean. And we are very, very happy to that. Can we go on to the objective? Yes, please. This is the abstract, the study of the homeopathic medicine that took place. You, can I read that? Yes, please. A study of homeopathic medicine took place in India and in Brazil. Its main objective was to share the research of the doctors 
with anticonvulsive and epilepsy formulas used in Rio de Janeiro, as well as the society's reach through social homeopathy. And I think, because I'm not really clear on the definition of social homeopathy, it sounds as if it is the philanthropic work of of the clinics. Absolutely. Okay, so this is that what you're going out into the neighborhoods and helping people. Okay. In the slums. In the slums. To achieve this goal, they based their work on the extensive bibliographic study of the teaching of Hahnemann, Roberto Costa, and Dr. Fatak. It was under the care of Dr. Lita Ohana, who is no longer with us. Okay, so go to objective number page three, um, developing a social proposal to acquire a greater knowledge in homeopathy practice with safe formulas. And people in the chat are asking about the formulas. They will be given. That healed the com- <laughs> right. That healed the convulsions and severe cases of epilepsy. We share an important findings of mix in all one drop bottle, which is very much um, opposite of what we think of classical homeopathy. But if you're finding that this is the way it works for people who are poor and in poverty in the slums, this is the way you have to go out and do it. Okay, go to the next slide. Uh, we're introducing here Dr. Nikhil Kambli, M, uh, not MD. I don't know. Oh, no, I'm no, sorry. Sorry, no MD on that page. He's the Bachelor of Homeopathic Medicine and Surgery from India, and he's with us on the line. <clears throat> Slide five, about seizures. Seizures occur in children between the age of six months and three to four and five years old in association with fever. So if you give your child a vaccination and their response is a fever, which means that Alternately, you might be seeing seizures and convulsions right after or soon after a vaccination. Majority occurs before the age of three years old. The average age of onset is age 18 to 22 months, which means fine. The impact of these neurotoxins via the vaccines may not have accumulated until a certain point. And then later, because, you know, you're giving these children vaccines as soon as they come out of the womb with the Hep B, if you uh, go by the doctor's recommendations. She's also noting on the slide that boys are more affected than girls, which is also seen in the fact of the autism rate, which is much higher in boys than in girls. Okay, slide six, you're going to have to go ahead and, and explain this one. You go, Nikhil. Do you have it? Um, slide yes. number six, seizure type. Partial, simple, complex, and generalized. Do you want to g- talk about this, or shall we just, just skim through this slide? Well, that's the result of the MRI of uh, normal consciousness and the one to the right which has the big red dot there that's the that's what differs from a child who has no um seizure no but, seizure so so i mean what will we is this what we would see on an mri okay. yes and it's combined with the brain area that's affected. But uh, the more recent the techniques evolve, they say when you're having uh, a convulsion or a seizure, both parts of the brain are affected and, and during that seconds, that period of the seizure itself. Okay, Dr. Nikhil, did you have something to say about this slide? Yeah. Okay, go uh, ahead. Can you hear me? Can you hear me properly? Yes, just go ahead. No, what I wanted to say was if it was the slide uh, in which it is written about uh, complex and part of mm-hmm. uh, There's an importance to that slide. Uh, first, uh, uh, when, we, uh, when a patient comes to us, uh, uh, most of the time, it doesn't come to a homeopath, uh, which is uh, very direct, it's already been diagnosed. But why are homeopaths? Yes, it is already, most of the time it has already been diagnosed, but why it is important for us? Okay. Is that we're going to cu- we're gonna have to cut you off and ask you to go ahead to the, um, to the website and post in your comments there so that we can get a clear um, 
otherwise it's not really happening. Okay, I so I can't I can't understand. Yeah, his what's his, he saying? His the, his internet connection is not so good, so we're going to just get him onto the chat area today. Um let's go ahead to um I think he was trying to tell us the importance of that slide. Yes, um, exactly. Okay. So slide number 7, seizure homeopathic treatment and you have here selected um, one remedy, secuta varosa, and what is the importance of this? Uh, it is uh, the source, uh, the form, the source is Hemlock Walter, and he prescribed with success secuta virosa in 6CH, and it was given uh, each, each 20 minutes after the seizure, and then after a little feeling better an hour each hour and then each two hours and and when feeling better going further to every three hours like if it's a baby one drop and then four hours then going back to every six hours one drop for a baby okay. of cicuta virosa Okay, so now this is probably one of the remedies within your formula, but it seems as if this could be a single remedy selected for seizures, but you would need to know... In India. What is that? In India. In India. That was used in India. Okay, so this is historically, it has been used. And so the question is, um, we would need to know a lot more in order to select this particular remedy above belladonna or aconite or arnica or other seizure remedies. Is that correct? Well, uh, here in Brazil, we make a mix of oenantes crocata, 5-CH, zincum metallicum, 5-CH, cuprum metallicum, also 5-CH, and magnesia phosphorica, 5-CH, plus c Silicia 5CH and that Cicuta Virosa, but we use it 5CH them all uh, uh, in one drop bottle. Okay. And I love the uh uh because that's written and I have no idea. It sounds wonderful. I'm going to do a dance. What is uh uh? <laughs> <laughs> they mean when the pharmacist is going to process that, they have to put. This, the right amount of oenantes equal to the right amount of zincum metallicum, the right amount of magnesia phosphorica and silicia and cicuta virosa, all similar quantities depending on what the client has purchased, 80 millimeter, 80, 80 or a box, a bottle of 60 or a bottle of 30. Okay, so they're they're all the same. They're all the same. Um, of this potency. is an information for the pharmacy. Okay, well, uh, uh means they all have to be equal. I love it. I'm gonna do uh uh when I'm talking from now on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> slide number eight is what is epilepsy? Children with epilepsy have repeated generalized convulsions. There is usually no obvious cause, and they are well between the convulsions. The diagnosis is usually based on the child's history. Epilepsy often starts at puberty and can be controlled and or prevented with oral anticonvulsants. All children with epilepsy should be referred to a neurological clinic for assessment and initial treatment, which means that you need to have a physician um, make this diagnosis and recommend it. In parallel to whatever we homeopaths are offering, they must they must check within a neurological clinic to see what kind of effects they've got. Because our formula of epilepsy, it's about uh, phosphorus, 200 CH, plus lachesis, 12 CH, and lachesis from, comes from the snake. Aluminium sulfurico D3, conium maculatum CH5, apis mellifica 5CH, and aluminium sulfuricum 12CH, and barita mur 5CH. 
So it's a mix of all of those for ones which come to us diagnosed within a neurological uh, doctor evaluation. We give them all this in a mix, uh uh, in all in one drop mm-hmm. bottle, and they they are functionally within eight months they forget about it all and they're more secure and they even go outside alone and before taking these homeopathy they were very insecure going to school and being with colleagues and sometimes they they had the seizure in classroom and they made they are made fun. So mm-hmm. with the homeopathy, besides treating them physically and within their aura, they are more stabilized and and their self-esteem is great because the remedies work just fine all together. Uh-uh. Similar. Uh, I, I, I tell you, I love it. And um, one of the things that I wonder... Um, these these remedy formulas that are selected to to help out, um, you have to know which formula to use at the appropriate time. Let's go on to slide number nine. What yes, are, excuse what are, me. Oh, go ahead. I beg, I beg, I beg your excuse. They are found all over the world because once I had I had the problem. I I flew from 42 Celsius into below 13 in the Netherlands, and I had all my portals were bleeding, face and body. And I called Dr. Leda here, and she gave me this snake and all the mix. And the lady from the Netherlands, I spoke just minimum from those languages. And I was able to, because they are pharmacy, homeopathic pharmacies are running 24 hours a day, over the Netherlands too, and they okay. made it. And I took it every fifteen minutes. I was so desperate because I was bleeding and I was fainting, and it healed me in two hours, two hours time. So was so, this was this like Ebola? What was this? No, it was just allergy from the cold. <laughs> just allergy from the cold. Wow. Um, so, so what you what you just said to us was that these types of formulas can be made in any country at any time because they have all of these remedies on hand uh, for any kind of emergency. Okay. Easy and access. Easy access. Okay. What are convulsions, commonly known as fits? Convulsions present with sudden abnormal movements and an altered level of consciousness due to abnormal brain activity. Convulsions have many different causes and may present in a wide variety of ways. The causes are epilepsy, high fever, meningitis, hypoglycemia, cerebral, sister cirrhosis. And so cysts due to pig tapeworm. And you know the other one, I don't know whether you have, but... Um, uh, disturbances in the um, like microwaves and other kind of radiation that is out there today. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the smart meters that are put on homes, but um, the use of cell phone is tremendous damage to the brain, and that's probably not even listed because it's so new. But do not use it as an alarm clock and put it under your pillow and sleep with it like this. Uh, use the sleeper, use the speakerphone as much as you possibly can, and limit your use of using the cell phone. Okay. I also tell my students at the university they should never sleep with their cell phones under their pillows. Right, it's not a good advice. Slide number ten: immediate action. All children with convulsions must be urgently transferred to the hospital for investigation to establish the cause and start correct treatment and management. Slide 11, how to handle the convulsions. Before moving a child with convulsions, make sure that their airways are open and often give oxygen. Always measure the blood glucose concentration with reagent strip and correct any hypoglycemia. Cool the child if the temperature is high. So these are emergency measures for the Physician, and if you are capable, if you're um, EMT. Uh, Dr. Nicole in the chat is saying we have to understand the pathogenesis of the remedy and the disease. 
So um, perhaps he can say a little bit more in the chat about that. Slide number 12, because we're not going to get through all your slides. We're just going to do as much as we can. Convulsion associated with febrile disease is 2 to 4% of all children before the age of 5. Um, we want to make it clear to people that um, fevers are an, an important and vital part of the immune system, stimulates and activates the immune system in all positive ways. It is only when the fever is way too high, probably caused by some kind of impact, that we need to worry. But a general natural disease, this is important and allow the body to heal with liquids, uh, preventing dehydration, rest, comfort, love, whatever that you need to do. But fever should not be something to be fearful about. I just want to emphasize that. So then you have on slide 12, the symptomatic seizures is 0.5 to 1%. Epilepsy is a recurrent unprovoked seizures in the first year of life. In childhood and ad adolescence, she's giving here some of the um, data. One per 10,000. One per 10,000. Okay. Yes. And the etiology on the following slide okay. it, it just uh, explains a little bit more of that. Okay, slide 11. We're just going to pass through that one, and you can see it. Um, on the website. Go to slide 14, epilepsy classification. Uh, clinical presentation is variable. So people will present in a different way when their brain function is not working properly, and it can come up uh, in these different presentations. Slide 15, the classification of epilepsy. Um, these are kind of uh, more medical for the medical audience, so let's go, on, go ahead and go to slide 16. Epilepsy, age-related classification. Uh, how, how do you want to speak about this? Anything? Thank you. Anything? Okay. Just that it is related to the neonates and the infancy and the early childhood. Okay. Slide 17. Epilepsy, age-related classification. Um, I guess this is showing a depiction of the tonic phase and the clonic phase when your child is um, convulsing or having an epilepsy. And we're going to define the difference between convulsion and epilepsy, correct? Yes, in the future. Okay. Uh, slide number 18. Do you want to talk about homeopathy is safe, silica 30CH? Yes, that's from Beric, and it was found in Homeo International. It's about a, a couple of books that are available there, and it's it's largely used in India. Can we go for the uh, neonatal, if Nikki would like to speak some, okay. or we go to the cases? Okay, Um Dr. Nikhil, we're having such a difficult time with sound. I'm sure you can hear us. If you're on the chat there, can you speak that, type in what you would like to say, and, and I will, we will gladly announce it? Do you want to try on the sound? Okay, we're going to try sound. Are you there with us? Nikhil, please say something. Maybe he hung up. Did he hang up? Or he's, no, he's, he's still... He's, no, he's there. He's there? I can see him. <laughs> okay. Speak up, Nikhil. Okay. Okay, we're going to keep going, but speak if you, if you have the sound. Okay. Um, he wanted to talk about neonatal seizures. This is his um, specialty. Yes, well, it's his part. Uh, actually, that's the details of what go, what goes on uh -huh. when 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 babies are having seizures 
flickering of the eyelids and pedaling. Okay. And the problem is the airways because of the apneic spells and uh, seldom tonic clonic seizures. Let's go for slide 20. Okay. Slide number 20 is uh, etiology of neonatal seizures. Um, I think he might be speaking. He's trying to. Okay. Yes, so, but... so here is another, here is another causative factor. And that one we didn't mention earlier is infections. So he mm-hmm. has something there. So, you know, there's lots of different reasons or causative factors that can contribute to these kinds of results of seizure, convulsion, and epilepsy. Go to the next. Yeah. Um, Most commonly found hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia. Yes. Okay. So which means that, let's say, the mother, the pregnant mother must be very, very careful about her thyroid about hypoglycemia, about um, hyper and hypothyroidism, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, this is the key slide of pre- 20- prenatal. Yes, the slide 21 says whatever it's given, found in India. Solano okay. Negro, 6CH. Okay. For, for a violent and convulsive nature. We, okay. we had a couple more, but we'll do that on the f- So on is, the next this, is, this is not Belladonna? No. No, this is Solano. another in the, in the same family. Is Sol- the Solana- same family. Same family, Solanacea family, Belladonna for things like um, meningitis. But here we have Sol- Sol- Solanum nigrum black nightshade instead of purple nightshade. Okay, mm-hmm. um, 22. It's effective. Are convulsion, seizures, and epilepsy the same? 23. Nikki, it's your question. Go on. <laughs> he, he's, not, he's not getting the sound coming through. You know why? It's really, really hard in India to get that internet going. Uh, too bad. Okay. What, uh, on, what well, is he saying? I realize. Uh, okay. It was his proposal. Make it to all left. I don't know. Okay, so a seizure, a seizure is the physical findings or changes in behavior that occur after an episode of abnormal electric activity in the brain. The term seizure is often used interchangeably with convulsions. Convulsions are when a person's body shakes rapidly and uncontrollably. During convulsions, the person's muscles contract and relax repeatedly. There are many different types of seizures. Some have mild symptoms and no body shaking. So are we speaking incorrectly then, um, Regina, if we say seizure and convulsion? Are we talking improperly? No, absolutely. It's just about the same. Uh, the convulsions case we, we, we have in our clinic, uh, they all bite their tongues and they can't, while that's going on, they yeah. have no idea they're having, it's like they've gone, their mind gone someplace else. And the then when, when the seizure or the convulsions ends, it's like uh, they've been shaken and then they realize they're on the ground and they're hurt. It happens, so it, it happens fairly suddenly, huh? Absolutely. And mostly when they are stressed, either a change of classroom or environment or a quarrel at home, something dramatically changed their mood, and and it's the trigger. So Dr. Bob in the chat is saying petite mal. And, you know, sometimes you see, like, your child is space. You know, you go like this, and they're not home. Um, They're just staring momentarily, and you know that something's going on with them. Yes. He's speaking? Hello. Yes, I Hello. hear Thank you. Yes, good. No, what I would like to speak about that is Mayada so it is small and mind tunes out and run water convulses. So basically uh, when we uh, uh, basically when we see that 
uh, in petit mal and grand mal, uh, the difference is sometimes uh, it is very difficult to find out whether the child is actually convulsive or not. Because in petit mal, the child will be just having glimpses of staring, and it will be difficult, very difficult for the parent to even realize it that the child is convulsing. It's hard for the parent to realize that the child is yes. having a convulsion because it's not because obvious. They don't know the signs. What is the reason they don't know? Yes, yes. It's not that because they will just find something like a staring, or it will be. I think we're losing like this. A, just an eye movement of the eye. Movement, movement, movement of, of the, the eye. eyes. Hello. Yeah. Yes, it will be barely. It will be barely. Visible. So only an attentive or a very careful. Okay. So a lot of the signs and symptoms okay, are and are barely so visible. Or the child will have sometimes. Or a child. Will... Okay. Yes, they're barely visible. Answer. Okay. Okay, we're going to ask you to 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 type in because we're going to move right along here. Slide number twenty four. It may be hard, hard to tell if someone is having a seizure, which is what I was just saying. Like if somebody just has um, eye movements and, and it's there for a moment and then it's not there. Uh, some seizures cause only a person to have staring spells. Okay. <clears throat> Slide number 25. Specific symptoms depend on which part of the brain is involved. And there's a whole list here of symptoms. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them. The the PDF file is available for everyone, it, even to the point of um, halting your breathing, like what we would think about sleep apnea. I don't know if it's, is, is sleep apnea, if, is, is that because of the brain or is that other, there's other physical reasons for the blockages and things like that. But just to think of muscle spasms and twitching, and, and this is not controlled by the, um, sim, is, which is it, sympathetic? parasympathetic we have teeth clenching and the eye movements yes. uh, dr bob just mentioned yes the worst of all is the panic because they they panic while they're having that seizures they are convulsions right and and, and uh, we have to watch for the for the air passages right that was the first thing get the airways open Slide number 26, warning signs, and that's what you were just mentioning, anxiety, panic, fear, but also things like nausea, vertigo, and the visual symptoms, what somebody might think of with their migraine, the flashing bright lights, spots, and wavy lines. We see very often, you know, people who have these um, blackouts or seizures or um, when they are driving the car because of the flashing lights, this is another stimulus that's going to set them into motion this this problem slide number 27 interfere a lot dr nikhil says that when we get the symptoms it is very characteristic okay so a homeopath would definitely recognize a physician would definitely recognize causes of sudden electrical activity seizures of all types are caused by disorganized and sudden electrical activity in the brain. So I, I suppose we need to have that homeopathic remedy. We have to learn a lot about recognizing when it's going to happen and how to meditate, how to use whatever um, alternative methods we possibly can to relax the, the brain from going haywire. Slide and number. Yes. the drops piece, the drops will also have help the their body to go at a peaceful state. So if we have that, the bottom within our home medicine cabinet, it will be useful. Yes. So this is an emergency remedy formula that everybody can have at home. Um, Dr. Nikhil, let's complete the thought that he said that when you see the symptoms, it is very characteristic of a particular homeopathic remedy. Um, so it's matching the symptoms to the remedy. He says, absent seizures, petite mal. Um, Dr. Sharma is saying, characteristic is significant symptoms. Okay. 
We have a lot of people on the chat. Get on there if you want to find Yay. out what they're talking about. Yvonne from Beirut is saying we still need the combination for the epilepsy with Secuta. I think she mentioned it, and it is on the it is in the in, in the PDF handout, so you will have it. No problem. Okay, uh, homeopathy in the right dose for a certain period brings smiles and even cure a patient with seizures. Uh, slide twenty nine points re- regarding history of the patient with convulsion. Um, okay, these are potential reasons like uh, brain infection and meningitis, uh, the physical changes in the body, the hormone levels, the glucose levels, the sodium levels, uh, a person who has had or a child who has had a brain injury, don't drop that kid. Brain problems that occur before birth, um, congenital brain defects, brain tumors, which are rare, choking. Um, you know, kids play these stupid games where they test each other and they choke each other. That's really ridiculous. But these things go on. Substance abuse, electric shock. We didn't list that before. Fever, we mentioned high fever, head injury, heart disease. That's another potential contributing factor. And heat intolerance. Remedies like glonidum for that. Slide number 30. Um, this is it just keeps on. too much information for us to cover. So yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it keeps on that list. Okay, this it's, list is very long. Uh, you mentioned that the people you're dealing with have. Do use crystal meth, ec- ecstasy, cocaine, angel dust, amphetamines. Oh, my God, we're giving these kids today tons of um, Ritalin and other kinds of high you know, stimulants. This is another thing to worry about. Uh, what about making sure our liver is clean? What are we eating? What are we feeding? If you have a venomous bite from a... Um, a sting, like you said, you had allergic reaction, and what do you do? Oh my goodness! Everything that's wrong with society today: alcohol, <laughs> <laughs> well, drug, painkillers, sleeping pills. Everybody takes a sleeping pill. Have you taken your what is it that they give you now? Ambien, Ambien today. Okay, slide, Ambien. Oh my! <laughs> slide number. Th- you know we're only going to get partially through this. Slide number thirty-one. Points regarding history of the patient with convulsion. Sometimes no cause can be identified. That's strange with all the lists that we just gave you. <laughs> well, maybe you can't pinpoint which one it is. Um, it is. Family history. Absolutely. We got to look in the family history and um, slide number 32. Or drug abuse, too. Drug abuse, we mentioned. Febrile seizures recurrence. And so is this the... Um, Number of times we're going to have. Yep, Dr. Nick Hill says he's treating people in the slum areas. Okay, slide number 33. Follow-up. This is for the physician. Yes. This is for the physician to check on whether these episodes are continuing in frequency and intensity to see if you have the right remedy. Slide number 34. Uh, MRI, take a look at the brain. I'm doing all the talking, Regina. I'm I'm just speed. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm You're speed so reading fluent. through. I'm speed reading through this because we are got to get through some of it. Um, but I, but how, I, how to understand the follow ups? Um, well, yes. It means this MRI shows to the right oh. hand side. Okay. Uh, exactly the moment where the brain was shaking in a convulsion. Oh, shaken baby syndrome. You know, that's a lot of mostly vaccination injury. Okay. Mm-hmm. Slide 35, keep on. Yeah. 36. Skips 35, oh. 36. Most seizures stop by themselves. So mm-hmm. if a person has one episode and that's it for their life, it's okay, right? Yes, okay. but to keep on the medicine cabinet, the SOS mix all in one drop box in case there's a sudden a stress it. or uh, anything that harms the imbalance of the client. Just being that within reach in case comes another seizure right. or a convulsion, you can easily cut it out. Absolutely. So if you are, if one of your loved ones or friends, whatever, 
uh, even a stranger. You just learn these basics to emergency care, loosening them, making sure that the area is clear so that they're not falling and having hitting some sharp furniture, um, stay with the person until they recover, call somebody else to go get help. These are kind of just basic emergency. Slide number 37. Just um, for doctors. For doctors. Skip yeah. 38. Um, oh. Cool the child. Cool the child. Um, mm-hmm. And 39. 39. It's, yes. It's an homage for Mohandas Gandhi. Because Gandhiji said homeopathy cures a greater percentage of cases than any other method of treatment. Homeopathy is beyond doubt a safer and a more economical and the most complete medical science. Absolutely. Bravo. Slide (laughs) slide number 40. 41. 41. 41. Okay. So this is our client, three-year-old, and the complaint that came to us, convulsion. We, We did the anamnesis. And he was extremely low weight comparing to his age group. And during this interview, he almost didn't interact. He seemed very, very shy. Hardly spoken, even when you're looking at him and making him respond. So, uh, slide 42. This is what we gave. Yay. Our mix. This is your formula everybody's been asking? Yeah, okay. first of all, first of them, this is the Oenantis crocata, zinc metallic, cupro metallic, magnesia phosphorica, silicia, and cicuta virosa. All in 5 CA, uh uh-uh. uh. So we suggested a 60 milliliters drop bottle. And because the client was three year old, Three drops every six hours. But <laughs> when he was having these convulsions, we suggested to the mom to give them every 20 minutes, then every hour. And when child was feeling a little better, eyes were responding, and you were seeing them much more there than absent look, then go to two every two hours three drops then when feeling better four hours five then go back to the initial dose which is every six hours and for a period of 120 days but generally we indicate from eight months minimum maximum two years of steady use of this whole formula all in one drop bottle Okay, so this is an Apiaceae family, is this correct? Water, water drop wart? I don't know. So we have to study this remedy. And it's, uh, that one is the Onanthus. And then we have zinc. Onanthus crocat. Onanthus crocat is the, it's the family of the Lacaz. It's another snaky thing. Oh. Okay, yeah. ne- next slide. Oh, next. So that's our return. When he returned, we asked to return in 10 days. And uh, he just said one episode. And in 15, 30, 45, 60, and 90 days, we, our observation that the episodes of the convulsions were very, very rare. And until now, the client, we just been there yesterday, and the client did not have any convulsion at all. Okay. So we are very confident in this homeopathic mix uh uh-uh, because uh, the response is very accurate. And right. that's about case one. Okay. Oh, there he is. Case number two um, is a two-year-old. Mm-hmm. And and these these cases, I assume, they are well followed up for a length of time, for even years, to be sure. And so, and you know, these are absolute. Years. This is this is coming from probably one of the the um, poorer neighborhoods. From the mother was on crack, addicted to crack, and all of these babies are born addicted. 
So, this is case number two. Number okay. one, no, no, there's no no drug, illicit drug but involved. Can't work. That was just a convulsion. But this study okay. case, number two, the mother had a baby, eight months. She was breastfeeding. And the one, two-year-old, also breastfed. And as she is a crack user, uh, the milk came within crack. So after the milk, the baby and the two-year-old, our client, would have the seizure. So we made on slide 45, um, I'm sorry, slide 46, we underweight patient. The looks were dispersed at, within the office, and during the interview, the child seemed to be kind of disconnected. But as we touch her belly, we had a stuffed animal, and we were making, we were playing around, and the child never looked to the animal. Just when the stuffed animal was touching the the belly, then the child looked at it. So besides low nutrition and the crack and the weak milk, I guess uh, the child had a little response, and we started on. Uh, slide 47, all this mix. Wow. The addiction of Zod that comes from the Institute. Okay. And phosphorus, 200 CH. Lachesis from the snake, 12 CH. Aluminium, sulfuricum, 3 DH, O 3D, whatever. Conium maculatum, 5 CH. Aluminium, sulfuric, 12 CH. And barita muriatica, 5 CH. All uh -uh, in equal doses. That's when you tell what the pharmacy, no. how to, to prepare. Okay, we have, and, a, okay. We, we have a caller please. coming in. Who's calling, who's calling, please? Hi, my name is Elaine. Hi, Hello, Elaine. Hello, Elise. Hello. Hi. Um, 90 seconds. Second. Oops. Okay, I was I was um, diagnosed with um, congestive heart failure, and um, you know they they put me on me um, certain medications, uh, but it's not helping me. And would you be able to um, give me a recommendation? Well, we well we we cannot um, diagnose and prescribe over the line, but if you um, send homeopathy world sixty. I'm sorry. If is it going to end it? Yeah. I, uh, it, it, no, no, no. It still goes. Um, e Elaine, if you email to homeopathyworldcommunity at gmail dot com, we will get you in contact with a homeopath. Are you? Yes, we, we will pu publish there our heart formula, Deborah. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. Okay, so, Elaine. What's, please what's hold. The, what's the homeopathy? What's the, um, the yeah. Um, email homeopathyworldcommunity at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Come and at and we will com. we will respond to your inquiry. Um, thank you oh, very much okay. for calling and for listening. Um, on Blog Talk Radio and Health In Show, March twenty four, two thousand and fourteen. Um, okay, uh, Regina. Uh, it's the you, last you have slide you, yeah you have provided so far two formulas and um the all third of this one is, is the last one okay good can i can i go quickly over that yes please okay slide 50 uh the epilepsy a young patient came over to our client and the seizures it was brought from a neurologist okay so i already had the MRI and all the info from the neurologist. And that's a big formula, but it does work. Epilepsy aquanozoid, that's the name. It is a nozoid, but we name it aquanozoid for the law here in Brazil. It, for is less that, taxes. Um, that is slide 51? Yeah. That's okay. what we are treating the epilepsy client. Phosphorus okay. 200, Aguaricus mus muscatus, 30 CH, chamomile, 30 CH, silicia, 30 CH, zincum metallicum, 30 CH, lachesis, the snake, 
12 CH, aluminium sulfúrico 3D, cônium maculatum 5 CH, apis melífica 5 CH, aluminium sulfúrico 12 CH, and barita muriática 5 CH. All this, uh -uh. in case you can't find them all, just do whatever the pharmacy near you have it. Well, you so, know what? It's important that we tell everyone who ever listens to any one of our shows, even on Homeopathy World Community, Blog Talk Radio, Health In Show, that we do not diagnose and prescribe that if you have a serious condition such as epilepsy, you need to be cared for by a qualified, experienced physician and or homeopath, your health care provider. This is not what we are doing. This is totally educational for the public to learn about their options. And other homeopaths as well that might try these formulas with right. their clients. Right. So when we had this client coming back, she was 19 year, years old. And uh, because of uh, she was very, very afraid, we suggested to put under the tongue the drops. So... Uh -huh within 20 minutes, and then she diminished it, the dose, and she came out, slide 53, she came out very happy with the treatment. It was going on well. And she's a young adult, and she's more uh, self-assured, and, and um, she reported not having other epilepsy crises besides the stressful life she does have. So the main, uh, the main thing is that homeopathy works for all ages, whether you're um, a, in, in the stage of pregnancy as a new mother, uh, whether you have a, a brand new baby, neonates, infants, toddlers, teens, uh, all the way up to the end of life. Homeopathy is, is safe energy medicine, safe and effective for all ages. You know, we have come to the end of the show. I want to thank... You so, uh, thank you. Yeah, she's, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being with us. Um, Dr. Nikhil uh, from, from India for calling in, doing your best to connect via the Internet and putting all the chat notes. Um, it's really wonderful that you were here. Dr. Carlos Lirio, MD, who is working in the Roberto Costa Institute in Brazil, where much of this work is being done. We want to thank you for providing this information for the PowerPoints and the vibrational no-sodes uh, work that you have done. Uh, it looks like TV host of the weekly homeopathy show in yes, TV Villa. Yes, one hour. Woo! Yes. Is that every week? Oh, wow. Every week. But it's not. It's, it's in Portuguese. I can't understand it. <laughs> somebody yeah, has to cable TV. <laughs> somebody but, has to uh, translate. And he's got a lot of books published within the Nozo area, and okay. uh, they're very effective. And I'm very, very thankful. Can I have yeah. 20 seconds for slide 59 okay. for the final considerations? Okay. Just and one slide. 59. And people got everybody out there, this PowerPoint is available totally and complete with all the formulas, with all the contact information for our wonderful guests. So you can download it on Homeopathy World Community or from the chat here, I put it. Go ahead. Yes, on slide 59, um, both India and Brazil, our focus group here, reached an elevated state of status in homeopathic remedies because our society is uh, it's, it's difficult to, to earn... Um, uh, quality life so it is an option a safe option and homeopathic medicine and the uh, aquanozodes are also a society benefit this is why we are sharing with you homeopaths all these formulas all the quantity and the uh -uh in all one drop box because we believe it We've been experiencing it for over eight years. And within mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Leda Ohana, 52 years of their homeopathic clinic. And we offered our clients the opportunity to acquire for a pe fair price. Even Boaron and Nash are here in Brazil. 
and their their price are more accessible and their medications are very efficient with quality warranty, easy access and effectiveness to our clients and to their families. And we offer them peace of mind and a better health, more energy and this is more than 20 seconds. <laughs> I'm so sorry. As a no, result of laughing. this practice, no, no, this is good. This is good. I want, I want to. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And uh, you know, everything that you're saying now is in opposition to the typical pharmaceutical industry. It's, it's rare and unusual that we have such marvelous people who's contributing their, their life's work. For no cost at all, all of these formulas you're giving, I, I mean, it's, away. you're giving away all of this vital information, which is totally amazing and mind blowing that you would be doing this. I mean, it, people are kind of it, like, what are you doing giving away this be, information? Because we get more from them, from the energy we feel of use to society. We have gained so much. It is our time for the ones that can't afford, we give the medicine. For the ones that can't afford, we give them the first bottle and then they produce in their favorite pharmacies. But right. we start, we get started in this, uh, in this flow of uh, offering a greater number of people the proper treatment for a less cost equal to all. And this is what Samuel Hahnemann wanted us to right. be access, access so, these medications and be free of our uh, diseases in the most natural way. In parallel to all neurologists and other doctors, but homeopathy is very safe. And we share with you and we thank very much C2K Computers and Debbie Brook for opening this big window for us in South America, Petropolis and Mumbai in India. Share our experiences with all you guys. Thank you for your time, for your attention, Dr. Bob and the lady had, that had called. Thank you for your attention. Namaste. Namaste. Yes, this is absolutely a joy and a pleasure to have you. I know we have been chatting via Twitter and uh, Facebook and everything. All the people out there making all of this buzzing noises between each other. We are like um, a colony of bees. We're making honey. We're making sweet, a sweet world, a good soul energy. And that's our pleasure to, to feed the world with good things, good thoughts and good energy. So I'm going to, um, I had some things to say to conclude today. Next week, who are we going to have? Oh, we're going to be talking about flower essences with L Lissy Battaglio, homeopath. She's phenomenal. And on Wednesday, I'm going to do another talk on Blog Talk Radio, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time USA on the causes of disease with my guest, Constantine Herring. <laughs> He's my favorite. And then um, if you like uh, and are looking for a homeopathic computer program, I suggest the Complete Dynamics program. There's a link on Homeopathy World Community for that. If you're not living in South America, South America or the Southern Hemisphere and you need some sunshine, some sunlight, there is the Sunshine Sciences with a 10% coupon on there, uh, right there on um, Health In Show, right on Nissan Communications or on Homeopathy World Community. There's also, last week we had a phenomenal speaker. She was a homeopathic student, and she wrote the book, uh, Rem Rhymes for Remedies. For Wonderful book for reading to your children. Get started early, or if you're a, a guardian or a parent. You can get that by clicking on Homeopathy World Community, the Narayana Books. Anything else you can do to support Homeopathy World Community is very much appreciated. And if you have any ideas for future guests, please let us know. The biggest oh. thank you to Amnon, show producer. Thank you. He's there in a pinch doing everything in the background. So he makes this, this program happen. <laughs> uh-uh. Yes. Uh-uh. 
Uh-oh. Yes, uh-uh. there'll be just one single thing. Uh, Dr. Lido Hahn and I, we wrote two books about 200 formulas of okay. homeopathy. Okay. And, uh, and one book of 20 case studies that can be ordered on our website. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm known you were wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you for your patience. Thank you. <laughs> okay, everybody, That's we're going to all go out together. Uh uh-uh. uh uh-uh. 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 love you bye 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 thank you all you are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network our weekly lineup of call in programs includes computers 2K now with Amnon Nissan Health In with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, The Tanya Love Show, Reawaken Your Brilliance with Julie Seibert, and if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it at www.nissancommunications.com. Sponsored by Atomos.com makers of quality video recorders and converters for professionals. That vidblasterguy.com, carolinaapparel.com, and deltaforce.net.